Samurai Warriors 5 has been touted as being somewhat of a reboot or a refresh of the series. After countless mainline games, expansions, spin-offs, crossovers, they've decided that now is the time to go back to the drawing board. And what they've come up with, and this is the genius right here, is exactly the same game as before. Brilliant. Let's take a look at Samurai Warriors 5. So yeah, I mean, this is still the same Masu game as the other 5,000 available on the Nintendo Switch and other consoles. Obviously, each of the games tend to have their own small gimmicks and nuances, but the core hack and slash gameplay button mashing goodness is still here. You're still doing the same stuff. So if you were worried about this going in the wrong direction, don't worry, you're safe. Equally, if you were wanting something actually fresh and different, don't bother with this one. I'm in two minds personally because as you may know if you watched a few of my videos, I am a big fan of the Dynasty Warriors series, especially 3 and 4. To me, uh, they hold a very special place in my heart and I owe a lot to them. It's been a long time since I played those two games however, but I'm pretty sure I could pick up and play them any day of the week and still love them. The problem is, as fun as the mindless gameplay still is with the modern games, I think they've never really peaked past that era. They're just not as good, which is kind of weird. Firstly, this is a very linear story. There's a chapter system with multiple stages within, all following the progress of young Nobunaga Oda and Mitsuhide Akechi in their rise to power. Unlike the great personal stories of each warrior, available in what I would call the ideal Masu game. This is one straight story pretty much, where you're often restricted in your choice of general. In fact, a good quarter of the warriors here are only available to play in free mode. What's the point? Saying that this kind of approach does allow the story some room to breathe. There's plenty of cutscenes here, mostly of people sitting around and talking about their next move and just how mental Nobunaga is. It's more than you normally get from these kind of games, and you do get a sense of what's going on in this heavily fictionalized version of historical events. But still, the nuance of the time, the decisions that were made, and the, like, the chess pieces in play here can't accurately be depicted in a few minutes cutscene between battles. So you're still wondering how and why you ended up doing what you're doing, and how on earth they could possibly come up with these decisions. However, it is far more stylized this time around. Visually, it's had a cell shaded look thrown on it, which I think works really, really well. It reminds me of the recent Samurai Showdown game with what's going on, and it suits the mood of the era and the console I'm playing on. Yes, the stylized visuals really help the Switch console power through this game without much issue at all. Sure, it's not perfect, especially in handheld mode, but I was shocked at how well it performed, and you won't notice any issues while you're enjoying murdering thousands of people. So what else does it do different? Well, I've got to be brutally honest here, and I think more people need to admit something like this. While I do enjoy these types of games, there's no way on this blue and green ball I am playing them all. Has anybody? Does anybody really know which mechanics are new, or which ones are reworked, or just copy and pasted? Because they really could do that. They could just copy and paste mechanics, say something new, and nobody would know, because nobody's played all of these games to actually find out. And if you have played every single Masu game available, I think you would be uh, wiser to spend your money on a therapist rather than the games. Y. 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 X. It's my favorite combo. It really, you know, clears the crowd and, you know, stops the enemy generals blocking. Useful. Okay, so what I do like is the ultimate skill, which may be a new thing, but I kind of feel like it's been used before. Uh, but anyways, you can equip four skills to your warrior. Some may be a powerful attack, some may boost your defense, others may replenish your Masu gauge. They have a charge up period, but during battle you can hold down the R button and use them. I found this an extra nice layer to your attacks, always something extra to keep an eye on during the battle rather than just mashing Y and X. It was good for taking down bosses and those soldiers who are hard to break through with standard attacks. I also like the big focus on combos in this one. When you're rated at the end of the battle, one of the big factors is how large of an attack combo you got going, and you're gonna need to get a combo in the thousands if you want an S rank. I thought it was fun trying to keep going, using the charging power attack to take soldiers with you on your journey to make sure you didn't lose the combo. Ridiculous of course, but I actually found it quite a lot of fun. There are almost 40 warriors present and counted, although only 27 will take part in the story mode, all of them with new designs, weapons and combos. That may be a big deal to some people out there, but it's not something I've really thought or cared about. 
I like that all the characters can equip any weapon they want and increase their proficiency with it even if they can't get to their max potential unless it's with their preferred weapon of choice. Characters have their own skill tree which is sweetly designed around their clan logo and there's plenty of things that you can be upgrading in this game if you enjoy the grind. You can upgrade your weapons, uh, you can auto level characters who are behind, you can upgrade your horse, you can even upgrade things that let you upgrade <laughs> like the blacksmith and dojo. There's a lot of stuff here but you really don't need to take advantage of it too much if you don't want to. You can very much play this casually if you please. There is a mode called Citadel mode which is something I enjoyed quite a lot. This is a type of tower defense mode where you have a partner and you try to defend your base against the foes in different locations with different circumstances happening. By taking these on with a partner, you can increase the relationship between the pair of characters and then you can see unique cutscenes between them. However, like most of the story mode stuff, they tend to be just sitting around a castle and talking. Nothing massively interesting or cool, but I did enjoy the mode quite a lot. You can even summon troops in this mode to fight alongside you. I think I may have secretly enjoyed this mode more than the story mode. Now obviously there is a split screen co-op like most games in the series. It kind of always worries me on the Switch though. The system just ain't usually cut out for it. Well, I did a couple of stages with my wife so excuse the terrible gameplay. I did get better after this. And the performance was actually rather fine. Even in handheld mode, the game performed admirably. I was shocked at how well it ran. The last Masu game I played in co-op was unbearably bad, so this is a great option if you're wanting co-op Masu action. The game is highly polished from what I experienced. The only weird thing that popped up for me was during co-op where once I activated the second controller, one of them would not stop vibrating. Even when I went into the settings and turned vibration off, it still went at it. I had to go into the Switch's home menu and force no vibration on all controllers just to fix that. A strange bug that I've never experienced before. So Samurai Warriors 5, if you're looking on the eShop, it is going to set you back a hearty $60 in the US, £55 in the UK and a mahoosive €70. Euros. I mean that's almost taking the smeg, but it is Koei, it's how they value their products which, you know, to be fair, they do offer a lot of content. Personally, I would advise picking up a physical version which is, or will be soon, cheaper than the digital version, plus you can keep it forever. There's even a super expensive edition and a super super duper expensive edition that's available on Koei's web store that comes with all sorts of little goodies like acrylic stands and soundtrack and stuff, which is great because the music is belting as always with these games. But if you just want the standard edition, then check the links below in the description and the pinned comment because I put links as to where you can purchase it and if you use those links, then you also massively help support Switch Watch at the same time. There's Amazon there, uh, they give us like 1%, which is nice of course, and there's a Play Asia link which gives us 5% and they're really nice and they're also not a massively evil corporation. Plus, if you use the Play Asia one, you can also get 5% off with the code SWITCHWATCHTV. And also, I think for a very short time, there's still some free shipping going on. So consider using those and supporting us at the same time. Overall, look, they've reinvented the wheel by making another wheel. The refresh or reboot is all marketing speak. What you're getting is an incredibly solid Masu game with satisfying gameplay that is still stubbornly refusing to go back to the good times, at least in my opinion. I like the new art style and it runs well on the Switch, but there's little to stand out from the massive crowd of Masu games already available on the system. I look at this and think, what would make you pick this one over Age of Calamity, uh, the massive Warriors Orochi Ultimate, or the latest Dynasty Warriors game? And you know what? I'm struggling. I'm struggling to think what sets it apart. It is good, but it doesn't stand out, aside from the good performance in co-op. If you want more, definitely pick it up. If you're looking for your first Masu game, it's certainly an option, but maybe not top of your list. For me, this is a very nice, solid 7.5 out of 10. Alright, many thanks for watching. Thanks for the support of our executive producers. Dean Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcrod7776, Elisa, Punky Duster, Michael Del Polito, Cigar Trucker, Cartoon Soren, Jack Severus, Vilas, and Robotech. Plus you, yes you, watching right now. If you watched all the way through, what a legend you are. The longer you watch, the more we grow. Give me a high five in the comments if you're one of those, and I'll give you one back. Check out some of our other stuff. We got a lot of content for you guys to have a peruse. See you over there. Have a good one.